You may have seen my other video on how to calibrate any device with a built-in screen. In this case, we're talking about laptop, iMacs, all-in-one PC, or any computer for that matter that's hooked up to a screen that is not hardware calibration capable. For that video, I was using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, which is this device right here. Now, the i1 Display Pro is a colorimeter. So what that really means is that there's a limitation to what it can do. It can only really calibrate screens and projectors. Although it can do a job really well, it's limited to those kind of devices. What I'm going to do here in this video is focus on the i1 Studio. Now the i1 Studio is a color spectral photometer. And what that really means is that an i1 Studio will not only just calibrate screens and projectors, it will also do calibration on printers as well to create printer profile or paper profile for that specific printer. And that's something that the color spectral photometer can do and it's something that a colorimeter cannot do. Now the thing is that there's not one that's actually better than the other, it's just that a color spectral photometer happens to do a little bit more, but if you really want to get the best screen calibration, I still recommend getting the i1 Display Pro. Now that being said, what I'd like to do in this video is show you how you can calibrate any screen that is not hardware calibration capable with the i1 Studio. In this case, I'm going to use my MacBook Pro here and we're going to use the software that comes with it, the i1 Studio software. I'm Art Suwan Sang, I'm an x right Colorado, and let's jump right into the calibration. So what I'm going to do now is take the i1 Studio and plug it into my computer. Because I own an Apple laptop that's post-2016, they all come with a USB Type-C port. And what I need to do then is get a USB Type-C to a USB Type-A adapter um, before I can actually plug in the cable that comes with the i1 Studio. So now that I have the cable plug in, I'm going to plug in the i1 Studio. Now, what you would have to do here is just pull the zipper back a little bit and then the cable has kind of like an orientation. So what we're going to do is go ahead and plug that in here. Make sure it's snug and tight. So once you plug it in, the computer should acknowledge that, hey, there is a device plug in, which is great. So now we're on the right track. The next thing what I'm going to do here is launch i1 Studio. So now that I have i1 Studio called up, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pick the device that I'm using. In this case, I'm using the i1 Studio device. Now, if you kind of see in the picture back there, it's not only just showing the i1 Studio device, but it's also showing a picture or that black version of the Color Monkey photo as well. So if you have the older Color Monkey photo, like I have here, and I'll pull this out. You can also use a Color Monkey photo to do screen calibration with the i1 Studio software too. But anyway, we're going to use our i1 Studio in this case. So what we're going to do next is come in here and pick the workflow that we want to go through. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the i1 Studio screen a little bit. This way it's actually filling our screen and we can see it a little bit easier. Zoom in a little bit more here. Perfect. There we go. So now what I'm going to do here is go ahead and click on display. In this case, we're going to do display profiling, so we're going to do that. So now that I click on display, I have a couple of options I can pick. First of all, I'm going to pick the color LCD, which is the one that I have on the laptop right here. Let's recenter this on the screen a little bit. The other thing, too, is that it gives you the option to do different kind of calibration. In this case, there's one for photo, there's one for video. For example, with a video, you can actually pick different kind of color space you want to use. For example, you may want to use DCI-P3, or you may want to use BT-709 or REC-709 in this case. There's also NTST, PAL, and also REC-2020. REC-2020 is really more for like high definition screen or HDR, but in this case, we're not going to worry so much about that. In fact, we're not even going to pick video. Now, you can always come in and do a custom one as well. And when you do a custom one, it doesn't, you know, you would come in and dial in all these settings. But in this case, we're going to go with a simple one and we're going to stick with photo for the time being. 
So when we choose photos, a couple of things are going to happen. All of our settings down here are now grayed out. That means we can't go in and change them. Now, under most circumstances, the luminance value that it has set here of 120 candela is actually a pretty good value to set. However, if you like to have your screen a little bit more dimmer, what you can also do is go in here, and what we're going to do here is choose custom instead. So with custom, it would allow us to go in and change our white point. So we can do a CIE luminance of D50. We can do a D55, D65, and D75. Or you can even do native as well. That's going to be the panel native. D65 is going to be the most widely used luminous value for any kind of screen calibration. And it also happens to be the standard screen calibration that is used to do printing as well. So what we're going to do is select D65 here, which is the default. Now the brightness here, we can go in and change our value. In fact, we can go native, we can go measure ambient. And we can do a couple of other things. But what I'm going to do here in this case is I'm going to be a little bit of a rebel and I'm not going to choose 120. I'm going to choose 100 candela because I like my screen to be a little bit dimmer. This way, if I'm editing on there, if the picture looks a little bit dark, it's going to print a little bit brighter rather than print a little bit darker. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and choose that. And tone response curve. What you can do here is just leave it as standard, but you can also pick, for, for instance, sRGB, or you can also do a custom one as well. So it does kind of give you an ability to go in and customize some of the functions in terms of screen calibration a little bit, but it doesn't give you that much room. And the other thing too is you can go in and change the gamma right below. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to stick with just the uh, we're going to stick with the gamma response curve of 2.2, which is the standard gamma that's been used throughout, and it's the standard gamma on both Mac and PC now. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, under flare correction, it has the ability to measure and adjust for, for flares. What I'm going to do here is go ahead and not check that box, because what happened is I don't want my screen brightness to constantly change with the ambient temperature that I'm in, so I'm going to go ahead and disable that. Now, one more note too before you go in and calibrate this, there are settings on a Macintosh system and on a PC that you must turn off before you do the screen calibration. I have made a video about that and I will put those links to the video in the description below so you can check them out. Once we're done with the screen, now that I picked my custom luminance value, I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Now, what this screen is kind of telling us to do is that we need to calibrate this device first. One of the nice things about having a color spectrophotometer is that there's an automatic wise points in here that's actually calibrated specifically to each spectrophotometer. So you kind of need to do the white point calibration before you can actually go through the measurement. So what I'm going to do here is, oops, I need to rotate this first. It's telling us to rotate the dial here, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate the middle so that it's actually pointed in one of the sharper corners here. And I'm going to go ahead and press the button on the back side here. And that will put it into a calibrating mode. So it's going to calibrate itself first before we can calibrate the screen. It's going to take a little quick moment to do it. It says a few seconds. So we're going to wait for that quickly. All right. So now that it has done calibrating, it will show on the screen to rotate your device back to the measuring position. So we're going to rotate it back now so that it points down towards the bottom. Now the thing to note is that on the bottom here, there is a slider to cover the reader or to cover the sensor. What you need to do is open this up in order for the sensor to be able to read what the colors that are flashing on your screen. So what I'm going to do now is there's a couple of things. Under display hardware setup, there's this thing called ADC, automatic display control. For automatic display control, what i1 studio will do is that it will talk automatically to the display to the computer hardware and adjust the brightness for you i generally don't want that part of the reason why is because when i'm working on a laptop i will be taking this device to multiple different environments so what i want to do is i want to know from max brightness of my laptop how many points do i have to go down or, or how many times i have to press the brightness down button in order to achieve my correct brightness value so what I'm going to do is that instead, so I'm not going to check that box. The other thing too is that adjust brightness, contrast, and RGB gain manually. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. This way I can adjust the brightness for this manually. 
Now in my other calibration video with the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, I have an extensive guide on how you can go in and adjust the laptop brightness of different Macintosh from different eras, one with the hardware function key and one with the touch bar, including PCs as well. So I will put the link to that video in the description too, so you can go ahead and check that out. But for now, what I'm going to do is kind of go past this point and you can use that video as a reference on how to set the brightness for these devices. Okay, so now that I have that checked, what I'm going to do is click on start measurement process. Now the other thing that's different between the i1 Studio and the i1 Profiler software which you would use with the i1 Display Pro is that I only have this amount of patches. That's it. It has a fixed amount of patch. I can't go in and select small, medium, or large amount of patches. This is the only one that comes with it, which is okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and click on start the measurement process. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here. This way you can get the whole screen. So a couple of things is telling us is that do not put the screen vertically because the sensor will not lay flat on the screen. So what you need to do is tilt your screen back, then put the sensor on it so that the sensor will lay flat and perfectly parallel to the screen. This way there's no ambient light coming in to contaminate the reading result. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is because I already opened the port on the bottom here, I'm going to go ahead and hang up my i1 Studio just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and click Next right now. So right now the i1 Studio is measuring the colors and is doing the calibration on my device. But before it's going to do that, it's going to ask me to adjust the brightness level. So we're going to wait for a moment here. And now it have actually showed me that right now I have my laptop set to full brightness. And the full brightness is at 372, well it's hovering between 372 and 371 candela or nits in terms of brightness. So it's pretty bright. This is about three and a half times the brightness of a print. So what we need to do is bring that value down to 100 candela. What I'm going to go ahead here is use the touch bar to adjust the brightness. So I'm going to go down one, two, three, four. Let's start with four first. So at four is still at 234, it's still too bright. Actually at four is already 110 for this device. So let's see. All right, let's try that one more time. Go up all the way and then we'll come down one, two, three, four. All right, let's try five here. What happens? Okay, so for this device at five is giving me a luminance measurement value of 79 or about 80 candela, which is a little bit dark. So what I'm going to do here is do four down from full brightness, which in this case, I'm able to achieve around 108 to 110 candela. And we're going to stick with this value. Now, something to keep in mind is that trying to get these value precisely the number that you pick, is going to be extremely difficult on these devices, especially in a laptop where they are already predetermined in different blocks that you would dial up and down. So it's just going to be a little bit difficult on that part. Now the other thing to note is that if you are only 10 or 20 candelas off, you won't really see that much of a difference in this case. So 110 is going to be perfect. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and click on next. So once I have done that, i1 Studio is going to talk with the i1 Studio device here and the software and it's going to start the measurement. Right now is going to measure 118 patches. So what we'll do is we'll have this running and then we'll speed this up and then we'll come back once this is done. So now that the i1 Studio is finished with the measurement, it would take us back to the interface. What we need to do now is go ahead and pull this out from our screen. Now what you don't want to do is go ahead and pull the USB cord out because if you do pull that out, it will break the authentication between the software and the device. So what that means is that your measurement are all null. That means it's all gets erased and it won't go ahead and create the profile. So you need to use it. You need to have the device plug in in order for it to work. This device in a way acts like the authenticator for the software to make sure that you're using a real device with the software. It's very interesting the way how they implement that. Okay. 
So we're going to jump back to I want to do here and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this again so that we can see a little bit better. So now that we have the measurement done, what we're going to do is very simply enough, go ahead and click on next. So now that we arrive at this screen, there's a few things we need to do here. First of all, there's a, it gives us the profile name. So the profile name, it's really handy. It tells us that this is the color LCD and it gives us a date and the ICC profile. Super simple, super easy. I think I'm just going to leave it as is because they have a date on it. If I want to do a comparison, for instance, between the i1 Studio and the i1 Display Pro, I might actually go in here and just denote the device that I'm using. So for instance, I'll go ahead and type in the word here, i1 Studio. Just add that into it. Now the ICC profile version, I am going to keep that at version 4 because I'm running on a Macintosh. Now if you should be running this on a Windows system, it's probably a really great idea to go in here and set this to version 2. But because I'm actually using a Macintosh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 4. And then the profile reminder, this is something really important. You should always come in or you should always think about coming in and recalibrating your screen at certain frequency. In this case, it recommends three weeks. You can always do it one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, or whatever interval you like, but you should always come in and kind of recalibrate because these screens, occasionally when you do use them, after some period of time, they do go off. Now, from my experience recently with LCDs, and by recently, I mean the past five years, LCD technology has gotten so good that it doesn't really go off calibration that often. So this is one of those things where you can pick the option that you feel most comfortable with to come in and recalibrate your screen. In this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and check on none. This way, it doesn't keep bugging me or nag me to keep calibrating or recalibrate my screen. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and click on Save Profile. When I click on Save Profile, it's going to generate an ICC profile that says Profile Saved Successfully. Click OK on this dialog and then click on Home button to continue. So go ahead and zoom out here. And then if I click on Home, it will take me back, but this is something that you can do. Once it's done with creating the ICC profile, What the software is going to do here is load a few pictures so you can kind of do a before and after. Because this screen was already color managed before, the before and after looks really close to each other. There's some minor tone changes, obviously, and you can load other pictures in. For example, like that one, we'll try that. So it's a little bit, it's about the same profile-wise before and after. It changes maybe just minutely, and that's considered a good profile. When you switch between before and after, it doesn't change a lot, it's good. Now, if this was native, for example, if you just got this laptop directly from Apple, the moment you click before and after, you're gonna see a drastic change. Apple screen is gonna calibrate much more bluer from the factory than when you actually do the full calibration on it, like what we have done here. So that said, what I'm going to do here is go ahead and zoom out and I'm going to go ahead and click home. Now when you click home, it just takes you back to the beginning. So that's how you go in and calibrate your display with the i1 Studio. Now if you have a display, an external one, for example, like the BenQ hardware calibrate display that is capable of hardware calibration, what you want to do is to use their proprietary software, in the case of BenQ is Palette Master Element, to do the hardware calibration on those devices. This way, the device will talk directly with the computer and you will get a more accurate color that way. So anyhow, I hope that you find this video helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Please like and subscribe to my channel and hit on the notification bell so that you will be updated every time I upload a cool video like this. And until next time, art is right. Is it working? Sounds coming through, right? Okay. <clears throat> Can you put that in the blooper reel? Excellent. Oh, totally. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Third time's a charm. How do I start this one? Just like that. How would you, as a viewer, like me to start my videos? Comment down below. And uh, give me some feedback because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Boy, you're getting good at this. Plug it in. So the moment you plug it in, the computer is supposed to recognize the device. What did I do wrong? Is it on? 
Oh, I didn't plug it in all the way. Oh, crap. <laughs> <clears throat> One more time.